Hello again everyone and we are live once again again welcome to Medicast Mini Virtual Summit and for those of you who have joined us yesterday for our discussion about web broadcasting with Darren of Black Magic Design again thank you so much for joining us and for those of you who just joined us today again thank you as well for joining us and uh, in case you missed the session yesterday that video will be uploaded to our social media pages and it will be available real soon and today it's another special day we will be discussing uh, one of the probably one of the most popular products of black magic design which is the pocket cinema cameras specifically the new one the 6k pro and again my name is larry or lawrence a lot of you guys know me as larry in this region and i would like to welcome you to this special episode again this afternoon of our virtual summit and and I'm, I'm not just sorry about our friends here in the Middle East and Pakistan we also have some viewers out there in Istanbul in Turkey so hello to every one of you so today is again it's not all about me I won't be speaking a lot today don't worry but today we will have a very special guest from Black Magic Design and he is live with us right now and he is based from London. Uh, I would like to welcome in our session today, our good friend from Black Magic Design live in London, George. So how are you, George? Thank you very much for having me. No, I'm, I'm doing very well. It's, it's great yeah. to be here. I, I think it's a bit sunnier and warmer where you are, but no, thank you so much for having me. Yes, it's sunny and warm. Even inside our studio, it's pretty warm. <laughs> it's pretty warm today. But uh, yes, and uh, I think this is your first time to speak to our uh, friends and clients here in the Middle East and in Turkey as well, right? Yes. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm very excited. I've been to. I've been to Turkey before, but um, not for for work reasons. So yeah, this is my first time. I I obviously deal primarily with um. The UK and the Scandinavian market beforehand, but this is the first time for me. So no, again, thank you everybody for having me. Okay, and welcome. And uh, you know, just for the benefit of our viewers right now, I think uh, they are so eager to meet you. So would you give us a bit of information about yourself, please? So yes, so yeah, uh, my name is George Dupay. I'm the uh, I I'm the technical sales specialist here at Black Magic Design, um, specialising primarily in the digital cinema side of the business. Um, I only uh, I only joined Blackmagic recently in November. Um, prior to that, I, I've been at um, two other large camera manufacturers. Um, I won't mention their names, um, but I worked there again in a in a very similar technical and and sales and support capacity. Um, and I've also worked on set set quite a lot, acting as a as a camera assistant or or an operator. So my background really is based more on working with the cameras out in the field and. Yeah, here, here I am today. I've managed to, you know, make my way down to London, and I've been working here in the industry for probably about five or six years. So no, it's been it's been a roller coaster, and I feel a lot older than I am, but I'm enjoying it all. Well, we all are, you know, in this industry. <laughs> so um, basically, like what I said, uh, today will be um, our, our topic's quite interesting. Um, I think um, you know this year, Black Magic Design. And they released the new camera a lot of people are very interested with that and i think we should just go on with it shall we right yes that's okay good. so well very the very first question that we have really is you know right now okay we're talking about the 6k pro because it's the newest baby in our you know in our camera range but still there is the pocket camera 6k and the 4k of course and they are very, very popular in the industry. Uh, I actually own one myself, and you know it's really, really fun camera, and it's just a lot of things that you can do with it, you know, to extend your creativity. But um, 
and we also know that the design of the 6K Pro was in heavily influenced by by the by this 4K and 6K camera. So can you tell us more about the difference between the 4K and 6K before we go on to our new baby? Yeah, let's dive into it. So yeah, thank you for that for that introduction. Um, yes, we're going to begin again by looking at our, our Pocket 4K and the Pocket 6K. And really looking at how it was it was developed on the foundation of our, our hugely popular successful original pocket cinema camera hd and really look at how that's influenced the design of the of the 6k pro so as i'm sure many of you customers are aware who have used our our, our black magic products uh, it's it's quite obvious to see that really the the main technological push behind the pocket 4k really came from a need for the pocket family to be able to shoot internal 4k resolution now both the pocket 4k and the pocket 6k are really based around the same accessible design having the advantage of small and lightweight 750 gram polycarbonate bodies yet still producing those crisp black magic cinema quality images in a market that really had a need for a small and compact form factor camera that could produce those amazing images now the entire pocket family, the, the 4K, the 6K and the, the new 6K Pro offer very similar core technology with a very easy to use menu system, 13 slots of dynamic range with that dual native ISO sensor, our internal Blackmagic raw codec recording and that unique sensor technology, which has really made it an ideal camera for creatives needing a range of options whilst still retaining those critical features that you've come to expect from our cameras. But where the 4K differs slightly from the 6K is it has the benefit of compact lightweight lenses, which really help keep the overall package of the pocket camera small. And again, this is due to its native 4K four thirds sensor size and that all important micro four thirds lens mount, which opens up your camera to that vast array of those lightweight lenses. But for a lot of people, they still prefer the, the, the 6K Super 35 mm sensor that you get in the 6K, which allows for that better depth of field control, that more prominent bokeh, and then the ability to scale or reframe the image from that brand new native 6K resolution. And again, with that new sensor comes that native EF mount, which enables a, a real wide range of superb EF glass that is already out there and accessible in the market. And again, it also helps support our Blackmagic customers who have that existing EF glass. And this slide is really just to show you clearly how the sensor size has, has really dictated the type of lens mount and ultimately your choice of lenses. And again, you can see this is the primary difference between the Pocket 4K and the Pocket 6K camera. As I've already mentioned, the 4K has that smaller tried and tested full four thirds format with that micro four thirds lens mount and a full resolution of 4096 by 2160. But the Pocket 6K on the other hand, changes this for that larger Super 35 mm sensor with the native 6K and a built-in EF standard lens mount. But this time you obviously have that maximum resolution of 6144 by 3456. And to end our comparison of, of our Pocket 4K and our Pocket 6K, I just want to mention how it's very easy for me to talk about the technical specifications and, and what separates the cameras, but most importantly is, is creatively and aesthetically, how does that change your image? And again, the combination of those EF lenses and that Super 35 mm format affects the image in terms of, again, that more prominent and deeper depth of field due to that larger sensor. And this is often considered a lot more cinematic than desirable for many customers. Again, the Super 35 mm sensor and the EF lens, and then the 6K really unleashes those endless possibilities for, for cinematic coverage and those images due to the vast array of lenses that are available. But then it's also important for me to mention that the choice between the cameras ultimately comes down to your preference, your lenses that you have available, your production, and really what, what your aim is when you're shooting. Now the Pocket 4K has a, has a really fantastic user base of creatives using the, the MFT mount for those lighter weight lenses. 
and also some productions such as run and gun productions or documentaries do prefer that deeper depth of field that the 4 third sensor offers over the super 35 mil sensor which makes it easier to keep subjects in focus and really reducing the issue of, of, of blurred subjects that you may face. Oops, sorry, um, did I, <laughs> I just uh, press something accidentally. So, well, it's, oh. it's, uh, it's sorry to, to bother you on that, but yeah, the, you know, it's really interesting that, um, you know, the, the, the main, you know, they look very, the 6K and 4K, so they look very, very similar, but at the same time, you know, there's, there's a very big decision in terms of a buyer and you know what, whatever applications that he needs that he intends to use the camera for uh, and again it's an everyday discussion in our in our community as well and now that we've seen this differences between uh, or now that we've seen the foundation of the core technology of the new camera uh, can you tell us you know what 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 have you added uh, what have you added with the 6k pro and how did it evolve the full pocket cinema camera family yeah i think this is what everybody is has come here for today so let's let's dive right in and take a look at some of the uh the new core ergonomic additions that the the 6k pro brings to the family okay so again thank you for mentioning that larry because you know obviously we have the pocket 4k and the pocket 6k which are still readily available and and out in the industry but obviously we now have the new 6k pro which has really added some heavily requested ergonomic additions to improve both functionality and operability of the camera and again these are requests that we've heard from our black magic customers and are what we've, we've listened to you and we've really decided that this is the best time for us to create a new addition to our black magic camera family so as I've already mentioned in previous slides, the 6K Pro still maintains the key features of the popular and successful Pocket 6K. Now, despite it being a brand new camera, we've still retained all of the same core technology, only really updating and improving upon what is already an incredible and fantastic camera. So as I've mentioned, you can still expect the same Super 35mm sensor with dual ISO and those 13 stops of dynamic range. You have those high frame rates. You have that native 6K recording still within the camera. Again, you have that internal Blackmagic RAW codec recording, and you still have our easy to use Blackmagic operating system. What we've really done with the 6K Pro is, is, is increase the operability, versatility, and the overall ease of use of the camera through these additional features, which have both helps the creator in their productions, it still allows the camera to stand apart but then also helps it fit really nicely within the rest of the pocket cinema camera lineup and then within our Blackmagic camera lineup as a whole. So probably the perhaps the biggest addition for, for a lot of our customers is, is the inclusion of our newly designed internal motorized NDs. And again, this was really due to a, a large number of customer requests who wanted to avoid having to rig their compact pocket cameras with say a large matte box and those external filters which can very often hinder the operator in, in certain shooting scenarios. Now these new NDs operate via a new slide system with the controls positioned on the top rear of the camera and you have an ND plus and an ND minus button ranging from clear two, four and six stops and as you can see from the animation on screen it really does change in an instance. And again, it's very easy for me to talk about the, the technical side of things, but creatively, how can you use that? How can you use the NDs and implement them in your production? So our new NDs feature infrared glass and they're specifically color, man color balanced to match our sensor, which allows the creator to use the NDs really without any worry of, say, an aesthetic change to their production. And you also have the option to alter your depth of field while still maintaining an acceptable amount of light. And again, without the issue of those added on accessories that could hinder you in certain shooting situations. Now, a nice short but sweet note here for me to mention is the addition of a, 
of a, of a brand new extra high quality and reliable mini XLR port. So whereas the Pocket 4K and the Pocket 6K have one XLR, we now have the option of, of two XLR ports on the side of the camera. Again, you have those rubber eye caps over all of the IO ports for additional protection. And they can also be detached now whenever required. And our mini XLRs in the 6K Pro are still that professional connection, yet really perfectly fit the size of the camera and still maintain the same Pro preamps as the previous pocket cameras. And these analog mini XLRs are switchable between mic with phantom power support and line level up to plus 14 dBU. Now, when you combine these mini XLR ports with a 3.5 millimeter stereo input, which can be used to time code, an integrated stereo microphone and a built-in mono speaker, you can really see how there's such a wide range of possibilities to, to capture your audio, which makes this iteration of the pocket camera really ideal for those documentary situations or some fast paced dialogue scenes that you might find yourself in. Now, we also have our brand new five inch ultra bright touchscreen monitor and it's now HDR. With an intuitive user interface, easy to touch sensitivity and the increased brightness of 1500 nits compared to the 6K 700 nit screen, it really is the ideal companion for outdoor use if you're faced with bright sunlight or, or in, a, in a certain tricky lighting situation where you may be getting some reflections on the screen. Now again, with like with previous models, you can still control your frame rates, your shutter angle, your ISO, and your white balance, all from the home screen, which really makes it an efficient tool whilst on set, with now the added bonus of true HDR color fidelity and that all important reproduction when you're looking at your image. Now this new ultra bright LCD now comes fixed and is connected to an articulating and 135 degree tilt function. You now have a 90 degree tilt function upwards and a 45 degree tilt function downwards. Now in this feature, you can, you can really see the capabilities that the, the 6K Pro brings to the table in allowing it to be operated in those more difficult positions, really helping provide the shooter with a range of new camera angles and possibilities. And again, this is really just reinforcing our aim of boosting functionality and operability to the end user. So now we're going to move on and, and take a brief look at the, the new optional Pocket Camera Pro EBF. Now this operable design was really founded on a combination of both customer feedback and also through our well-received 1080p OLED Ursa EVF, which has been out there in the industry for, for a fair amount of time and is, we've had such fantastic feedback from our customers and it really is an, an industry standard that a lot of people are looking at when designing their EVFs. Now with an EVF, customers really did love the ability to be able to focus more intently through the EVF. And this obviously helps remove any additional light that may affect the image, which is seen on screen. And also simultaneously, it allows for more focus on, on the scene at hand. If you're in a, say, a very certain and important scene, if you're shooting a drama, it could really be a hindrance if you're being distracted from the outside world. So the EVF is fantastic for just allowing you to focus more intently directly on what you're filming. And you can also see how adaptable the EVF is for that close handheld work, or again, when out shooting run and gun style, which is something that we see this camera being used a lot for. Now, as you can see from this, from this image, the detachable EVF mounts directly on top of the body. It boasts a 1280 by 960 resolution. Again, it has a plus and a minus four diopter range and it uses a proprietary connector on top of the camera, which can be tightened or released via a thumb screw. And this really helps remove the issue of difficult tools when on set and makes for that seamless transition from screen through to your EVF. Now, other exciting features include the digital focus guide with user interface information. You have a built-in iCut proximity detector which is very similar to our Ursa EVF, 
which is primarily used for switching off the display screen when not in use to help save on that all important power consumption. Now all of the power and the data on the new EVF is all via the proprietary high density pin connector, which is attached to the top of the camera. And again, it's mounted in seamlessly as soon as you screw in the EVF to the top of the camera. Now, what's very important for us here at Blackmagic is making our cameras open and accessible to, to all shooters. So with a nice little touch here is there's also different sized silicon eye cups that are provided, which include a left and a right eye option. Again, just reinforcing our aim of boosting that functionality and adaptability for the end shooter. Now, another hot topic and a hot conversation for people is, is um, it's batteries and power when shooting with the camera. So we now have our, our brand new Pocket Camera Battery Pro Grip. So with the addition of this new grip, you have a larger two cell capacity, which allows for approximately one hour of recording per battery, obviously depending on, on your camera settings and your recording formats and your, your frame rates and your resolutions that you're using. Now this, this, hour, this extra, this hour of recording per battery is, is a vast improvement over our Pocket 4K and our Pocket 6K. Now this new battery pro grip will use two NP F570 batteries and it's very different to the original. There's now no need to remove the internal battery. Instead, it connects via pins onto the base of the camera. Now, as the internal battery can now be left in, you have three fully charged batteries available all at once. So again, depending on your recording settings, you should get about three hours of recording if you have the new Pro Grip with, with three batteries all included. And again, this is really perfect for our customers who are, who are wishing to shoot for longer periods of time, or if you're out in the field and you have limited power supplies available to you. Now this animation quickly shows how the, the grip screws seamlessly into the bottom of the camera body. Now it also features non-slip hand grips and it's designed to perfectly match the polycarbonate of the camera body with the ability to charge batteries in the grip via, our, via the camera's 12 volt DC power connection should you wish to do so. Brilliant. And uh, right. I th yeah, I, in you know that that um, those slides show that you know it's it's really a welcome addition to the existing 4K and 6Ks and the 6K Pro, and um, you know it's really nice to see you know one of them next to each other. It's like you know it's like a candy shop kind of. Uh, kind no, of it's image. it's it's fantastic, and you know we, we obviously have the 4K and the 6K and the 6K Pro now. And we'll, we'll come to it later looking at, at the different cameras in a bit more detail. But this, the, the addition of the 6K Pro and all of these new ergonomic additions are, are really based on customer feedback and from creatives out in the industry shooting and what they have desired or required when using our Blackmagic cameras. So really, we just listen to them. And every single addition, we're hoping just makes the camera more versatile and easy to use and easy for the end customer to shoot with. Again, you still get the exact same image quality as you do with the 6K, but we're really just hoping that these 6K Pro editions just make it an easier camera for you to use. And, and especially, you know, with things like the, the, the battery pro grip for a lot of people, they want to shoot with longer periods of time. So again, these are just, these are just iterations that we've just taken on board and hopefully we've created the, the best camera for the end user to use. And, and I think you've mentioned a very important thing there, which is the part where in you know, Blackmagic listens, and uh, the feedback really is amazing. Um, you know, we you, you get you know, new features that you add to the camera, um, the ergonomics, the you know, that you change with it. You know, the color science, and then now there's a new color science. But you know, I will not jump onto a lot of it because this this really is, is an exciting conversation. But you know. For for now that you know we have the three cameras lined up, for sure there's a shared core technology that's being shared. I mean, shared between those three cameras, and you know, for some of our viewers right now who are using uh, 4K or 6K, for example, myself, um, how easy will it be for me if I'll be jumping for from a 4K to a 6K or to a 6K Pro even? 
Yeah, so we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll share the slide in a second, but I think it, it's important for me to mention that we really see here at Blackmagic that regardless of what camera you're shooting with, our core ethos and our core shared, shared technology is similar throughout. So really we're, we're saying that you're not compromising on, on any camera that you're using. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna break down, go through a few slides and really break down and look at the core tech, core shared technology throughout our entire camera range. Sure, okay. You're... Okay, so thank you. And as I, as I just mentioned, you know, all of our cameras are based on the same design and shared technology. We really want that operability and simplicity, regardless of whether you're shooting with a pocket camera or, or our Ursa family. Now, what I think makes this the best camera range is, is really best described by what lives inside our cameras. You know, we really saw a position in the market for when talking about the pocket family for a small and compact form factor camera that can produce those amazing images. Now, we've obviously shown you the products, but maybe let's take a look at the, the core and really look at how nothing is compromised, no matter what, what camera you're using. So we'll start by talking about our Blackmagic operating system. So speed and efficiency really is integral to operating our products. The Blackmagic operating system is, is very simple and intuitive to use, and you have the ability to update firmware in the field and really provide more functionality for the end user. Now, all of our bright, full HD touchscreens are easy to frame, focus, and shoot accurately with. There's no need for menus or, or those tricky rotary dials that some people aren't as, as fond of. You purely have fast and logical access to show really only what is needed on screen, whether you want to change the resolution, your frame rate, your ISO, or even to view our library of LUTs and presets. Now the main menu also allows us to set the camera up however we want. You can access your metadata, your media, or those critical battery levels. You can do this by swiping to tap or add or remove settings. And this is also intuitive because you can do it based on other choices that you've made, such as maybe your frame rates relating to your recording format. And it's also worth me mentioning that you can also control the camera remotely via Bluetooth on either an iPad or an iPhone through a designated Blackmagic app. Now, not only does every Blackmagic design camera offer non-proprietary CFast and SD media, but they also offer USB-C recording. Now the USB-C port really enables you to record directly to external USB-C drives or to flash drives. And this really helps the end user utilize a more cost-effective media solution with those greater size capacities than say smaller media cards. And this can be very vital again when shooting corporate or documentary footage, which can require those longer periods of shooting time. Now, another added benefit of USB-C recording is that it also speeds up the post-production process as you can edit or grade from the same drives that you're recording onto by simply unplugging it, plugging it into your workstation and away you go, you can start grading or editing. And you can also support power via the USB-C so you can charge your batteries internally within the camera via that USB-C port but do just make sure that the camera is turned off before you do this because you cannot run the camera live simultaneously whilst charging those batteries internally. Another key example of our, our technical development is in our dual ISO sensors. Now these sensors are only available in our, in our pocket family, the 4K, the 6K and the 6K Pro. Now our sensors were really developed as customers in the market space were looking to shoot in, in those lower light situations, but still at those higher resolutions. Now we began by building our own proprietary sensors in 2015 with the Ursa 4.6K sensor. And what we learned from building that sensor, we've, we've taken on board and we've really been improving upon ever since with, with every sensor and every camera iteration. Now we combat the low light issues that some customers may face through our dual native ISO, which goes up to 25,600 for those real high dynamic range images and that incredible low light performance. And we have a native low gain of 400 
and a native high gain of 3,200 ISO. Now, as a result, you really do have the flexibility and adaptability of choosing your desired ISO, yet still retaining that integral dynamic range, that sensitivity and that ultimate latitude that is so important for your images. A massive part of our cameras and, and what makes our cameras so unique and special is, is our own internal proprietary codec, our own format, Blackmagic RAW. Now this really integrates our technology between camera and post-production, really optimizing color fidelity throughout the chain. Now it's first and foremost designed for preserving and the protection of dynamic range and color precision image information without really discarding color and image detail, which can often result in a, in a fairly substandard clip. Now, B-RAW processes only the sensor data and relies more on the post-production side to, to debayer and create the video information. Now, secondly, efficiency is really key in whenever you're recording. Now, compared to other RAW formats, which, which very often are just a, a, a large bucket of pixels that can demand a lot of processing, we really work hand in hand with our sensor technology, leveraging that processing power inside the camera to help reduce those file sizes and produce the same bit depth, dynamic range and control as a raw format with the information being encoded and saved as metadata for you to use later in post-production. Now, finally, we can't really talk about Blackmagic RAW and, and what a fantastic codec it is without talking about the ability to complete our entire chain by finishing and working with DaVinci Resolve in that post-production site. And it's still the world's most renowned and used grading software. And it's really been unified now by, as Lawrence mentioned earlier, our new generation five color science. So our new 6K Pro was, was primarily built around our generation five color science, which is also going to be included in the 4K and the 6K pocket cameras at a slightly later date. You won't be waiting too long though. Now it was developed with DaVinci Resolve technology and IP processing within the camera. And as I'm sure you're all aware as, as, as frequent camera users, our, our color science really underpins our sense of performance, helping to reproduce those extremely accurate skin tones, that image clarity and those beautiful lifelike colors that really help create a richness and a vividness to the image. Now, through our ever evolving development, we really have fine tuned our color science to allow creators to match both archive and current footage to, to perfection. Now we build upon our, our very popular generation four color science, obviously, and generation five is a really fantastic addition as it can easily be manipulated and worked within DaVinci Resolve, again, to produce those vivid colors and really capture what, really see what the camera is capturing. Now, looking back at the all of the sensor technology or the shared technology that I've mentioned, we really feel you cannot compromise on any of our unifying technology within our cameras. Again, you have the ease of use and operability of the Blackmagic operating system. You have the available light possibilities from our dual ISO sensors. You have the efficiency and the image preservation of our Blackmagic RAW. And then finally, you have the color fidelity and the reproduction from our new generation five color science. Now, for me, these four areas are really what encapsulates what you need in a camera to help create those cinematic images. And again, something which is shared throughout our entire core technology. Let's go back to the studio, Larry. Yeah, actually, that's, um, that, the, specifically the Blackmagic OS, um, that that really is a very uh, big conversation uh, that I have with some of our users, the videographers and cinematographers in the region we're in, you know, jump in, not even just on the pocket range. Uh, the OS is also shared with the, the Ursa 4.6K, the G2 and uh, the 12K as well. So, you know, jumping from one Blackmagic camera to another is really an easy process. So once you use one, it, basically just follow that and uh, we have some user we, we have a, a specific user he's a good friend of mine he's using a g2 and now he got a 6k pro and you know right from the box when he opened it it's the same os so the, the familiarity with the os itself 
really plays a big advantage for for those who will be um, switching from one black magic camera to the next and again highlighting on the OS because I'm a very big fan of the OS of black magic design it's really the ease of use of it um, it's and that's, not yeah, and sorry yeah. I was gonna say that's that's the fantastic thing about it is that as you said you can if you've basically if you've used one black magic camera you know how to use them all and that's what makes it such an easy to use camera and again a lot of people will as you know as your as your friend you mentioned will will buy one camera and then we'll buy a second and we'll very often use many in unison on set they'll use them all together and it's it's it sounds like it's too easy to be true but it really is you can you you can put it out of the box and if you've used one then you know how to use them all and even if you don't it takes a few minutes to just be able to navigate your way around around the camera it really is and it and that's really our aim of just making it such an an accessible and easy to use camera for for no matter kind of what style of shooter if you're if you're a very experienced DOP you'll find it easy but if you're just starting out and you're new to the industry say if you're looking at students or in the education sector it's such an easy camera for them to understand and be able to use and you know hopefully it makes you know they can spend more time looking at the creative side of things rather than having to go through menus and which can really kind of take up a lot of time on set and i know from experience that i spend too much time going through menus on set <laughs> yeah actually more than time is also the energy so instead of pouring your energy to creative you know to you know squeeze your creative juices out of it you basically take you know i've used some other cameras myself and you know the the ease of use of the black magic os is really something that is you know really amazing it's really easy and um you know it's, you just really have to look at it for yourself so and yeah. and the and now that you know now that you've presented us you know the shared core technology and you have um you've lined up the three pockets uh, that's part of the pocket family. Now, the very big question that we always get is, which camera is best for me, or which camera should I buy? Uh, I think we we have to guide our viewers right now on, you know, how can they decide between the three cameras that are lined up in front of them? Yeah. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll cover that now. I think again with with now that we've got the additional features of the six K Pro. It, it probably might now be the time to ask oh, well, which camera would be best for me and obviously the short response would be that it primarily depends on what technology you're looking for uh, or the unique project or, or scenario that you, you're faced with but I think you know for a, for a more in-depth look at the differences between the Ponca family let's really take a look now and then help you decide which ultimately which camera is best for you okay let's go Okay, so we're going to start on 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 this on this diagram. Now, this this diagram may look maybe slightly confusing to to you when you're first looking at the at the diagram, um, but really this is just highlighting six key areas that, as a camera operator, you would really consider when when you're choosing your desired camera. Now, it's important for me to mention that this isn't an exhaustive list but just typically something that you would look at. So obviously you have the inclusion of your those all important frame rates, your dynamic range, your ND filters, your resolution, your sensor size, and then also the speed of your rolling shutter. Now, when we talk about the 4K in, these, in this first diagram, first and foremost, uh, what separates the Pocket 4K and, and where its strength really lies is in its faster rolling shutter readouts of approximately 16 milliseconds. Now, this obviously results in a more sensitive sensor and better handling of those available light situations. Now, when you combine this with the dual ISO sensor that obviously every single pocket camera has, but the 4K specifically, then it really helps to ease combat those issues and still retain that latitude in those lower available light situations. And obviously, we also have the smaller 4K four thirds sensor. Now, as I mentioned, this smaller size and resolution is often better suited, say, for, for documentaries and, and, and ENG shooters wanting that deeper depth of field that it provides. And then also we've mentioned the wider range of those lightweight lenses that the Micro Four Thirds mount can bring to the table. And we also have the Pocket 4K's frame rates. Now, it can record up to 60 frames per second in, in 4K. 
or 120 frames per second in, in HD wind load. Now for a camera with this compact form factor size, you know, you can really still create those, those slow motion cinematic effects. And this really is a, is a fantastic need and, and a must for, for a lot of our customers. So I've obviously already mentioned some of the applications that the, the Pocket family can be used in, but when we talk specifically about the Pocket 4K, we've seen it used for a wide variety of applications. Now these three images that you can see on screen, it, these, aren't, these aren't us as Blackmagic telling you that this is where the camera should be used. This is really a list of where we have seen the camera being used. Really the camera can be used on any type of production for any scenario, but this is just an example of feedback we've had from customers and where the camera we have seen it being used. I mean, where we tend to see it predominantly is in event videography, where the demand nowadays is for, for a much more cinematic approach. We also see online content creators use it for, for example, on YouTube due to its ability to work with our ATEM streaming products, similar to the discussion that was had yesterday with my colleague. And we also see it on independent film productions who, who really prefer that compactness and, and the versatility of the camera when you compare it, say, to a, a DSLR or a mirrorless style camera. And as I just mentioned, we also work very closely with film schools and universities and in the education sector. Now, it really acts as a great educational camera due to its ease of use and accessibility. And it, and it makes it an obvious choice for, for creatives or students starting out in the industry, whether it's their first experience with a Blackmagic camera or if it's their first experience with a camera ever. Now, moving swiftly on, we're going to have a look at the, the Pocket 6K. And you can already see the, the, the changes in the diagram that are highlighted. Now, obviously, the key change lies in that in that higher native 6K resolution. But again, a lot of people see 6K, but what, what the actual benefits that the 6K brings? Well, obviously, you have the ability to, to downsample to produce those cleaner, sharper images in maybe a 4K or a 2K deliverable. You have the option to reframe or rescale or stabilize in post-production. You can also create multiple shots in one frame. And ultimately, you can really ensure that your work is future proof for when you're presenting it somewhere down the line. And obviously, when you pair this 6K with the larger Super 35mm sensor, you do get that high, incredible resolution in that compact size. And again, you have the ability for to use those cinematic EF lenses due to that native EF mount. And again, you can have that shallow depth field and the more notable bokeh that that brings. And obviously, with the increased resolution, you also have a slight change in frame rates. So you can now record at 60 frames per second in the native in the 6K resolution compared to 60 in the 4K resolution of the Pocket 4K. Now, following on with a similar trend, let's now have a quick look at the, the use cases of the 6K. Now, it's fundamentally been used by creatives wanting slightly more cinematic aesthetics than, than the 4K. And users have very often included music video creators who will move on to larger TV dramas or, or feature film productions but really see the music video as a, as a great way to tell uh, a cinematic and serious and dramatic story in a short space of time. A large scale advertising for, for commercial productions such as fashion or corporate events really utilize our cameras. And as I've also mentioned, they often use them in unison for that perfect image matching in post-production. And we've also seen Again, a high amount of creatives use it for, for independent films due to that increased resolution and super 35 mm sensor, similar to a lot of people using the Pocket 4K. Now, finally, we have the, the star of the show today, which is the, the Pocket 6K Pro. Now, as I mentioned, nothing has really changed from the 6K sensor or the core technological capabilities of the camera. When looking at this diagram, the difference here is primarily the inclusion of those new internal motorized NDs. Now, putting the other additions aside for a second, the NDs do really help the 6K fit nicely in between, or help the 6K Pro sit nicely in between the 6K and the G2. It really just acts as an alternate solution to the 6K by hosting some of those new ergonomic additions. 
or the, has the ability to complement a larger camera. Now, the benefit of those MDs, again, is to allow the creator to shoot in wide aperture without overexposing. And you obviously have the benefits of that shallow depth of field and selective focus effects whilst under those constrained lighting conditions and without having to rig it externally with large accessories. But I also don't want to just talk about the NDs without again talking about all of the other ergonomic additions of the, of the camera. You have obviously the new HDR touchscreen, the battery pro grip and the EVF. And again, they're all really based on operability and functionality. But just these are internal NDs when talking about this diagram really are the perfect complement to the 6K sensor. Really working together to help create the best camera possible. Now, finally, we'll just talk about the uh, the use cases for the 6K Pro. Now, although the camera hasn't really been out for too long in the hands of creators like yourselves, we really do think that these new features will help it sit in a brand new wide variety of markets for Blackmagic. Now, the Pocket family has always really been used as a handheld device or with gimbals, such as on run and gun documentaries or, or for location scouts or for pickups on those larger films. But we really do see this camera being used also as a second specialist camera, you know, for those more unique situations that you find yourselves in, maybe uh, for visual effects work as a, as a stunt camera, as a crash camera, or maybe in those non-intrusive situations. And it's an ideal camera for that, again, due to its high image quality, yet small form factor. Now, you can also match our color science with, with those larger cameras to help create a, a really seamless transition when working, say, in a high end Hollywood feature or again, complementing larger camera such as our RG2, for example. Now, finally, I'm just going to mention a little comparison diagram that we have here. And this really is just a comparison of, of all three cameras showing where the main strengths lie on the 4K. Again, you have that smaller four thirds sensor, the micro four thirds mount, and that increased rolling shutter speed of 16 milliseconds. You have the benefits of the 6K due to that high resolution and the super 35 mil sensor. And then finally you have the 6K Pro, which still retains all of that core 6K pocket technology but now offers those brand new ND filters. Great, back to the studio, I think again, Lawrence. Yes, yeah, so uh, I think one, one of the key message of that uh, segment was the fact that you can, you can actually have, um, you know, have a pocket camera for most applications that you do. And um, it's really amazing at, um, you know, having, you've mentioned you know putting a pocket as a as a b cam even as a b cam really really you know it's it's something that we see a lot in in our market and i, I guess also in europe as well you you do a lot of that application right yeah so we see again it's very it's very easy for me to say this but the, the camera can be used for such a wide variety of productions but for smaller productions people would would are perfectly happy with using the pocket camera, either the 4K or the 6K as their main A camera. But for a lot of people, they like they like it to complement a larger camera. I mean, we're gonna come up with an example later, but some people will use a larger camera, say from another manufacturer, and will use the pocket camera as, as their B camera to get into those tighter shooting situations. And then they can seamlessly match the images together in post-production due to our due to our color science and our technology and again they very often use DaVinci Resolve but for a lot of people it the, the pocket camera is their primary camera again it's, for a lot of people who say are a producer director budgets could be could be tighter and this is the absolutely ideal camera for them and it's also important for me to mention that the situations that again that I've come up with are not where we think the camera should be but where we've seen the camera being used you know we get inundated with with people telling us and showing us where what they've been filming but this just really highlights an area areas where we see it being used primarily but again the it's cliche to say but the, the possibilities are endless really with the camera it's it's up to you the end user to decide what to shoot with and yeah that's interesting because uh, when we speak to a lot to more and more users in the market I'm not you know I'm not generalizing cinematographers or videographers you know 
people who are using cameras sometimes you'll be surprised with you know how they use the camera and just like in our conversation yesterday we're in you know the pocket cinema camera is being used as a live camera as well so you know we've we've seen a lot of that uh, change and speaking of use cases and users uh, i think you have uh, something for us to share um, who are your you know notable users of uh, this technology at least in in your region yeah yeah so in this in this uh, we're, we're coming to the end now so i just want to end it by by really highlighting a few a few customer stories of, of people who have chosen black magic design for their for their creative workflow and you know really this is not just customers who have used the black magic cameras but they've also used the post-production side of things so our, our davinci resolve editing editing and grading software and this has really helped provide them with end-to-end -end workflows from from sensor to codec right the way through to, to post-production and really we're just going to see how the cameras have been implemented when these customers have been using it so i think i'll i'll dive into the final bit of the presentation now right so we're going to start by by briefly looking at a, a cinematographer named um martin kavinsky and and he owns a, a wedding production company called keiko films now martin is an award-winning wedding videographer and he's based in the Czech Republic and he really creates high-end cinematic wedding films all over the world and he shoots primarily on the pocket 4k but he uses our entire workflow extensively and exclusively. Now Martin obviously as he's filming weddings he likes to film in a documentary style to, to obviously really interrupt as little as possible to help create those those truly emotional moments of such a special occasion that can can obviously never be recreated and the small compact size of the pocket 4k is the ideal camera for him for this now martin's emphasized his need for for really superb color grading and that high image quality with a, with a filmic look throughout his pipeline so you combine this with a requirement for lots of storage to film an entire wedding which you know could take eight nine ten hours in a day and Martin chooses to film in our Blackmagic RAW codec for, for those reduced file sizes while still maintaining colour fidelity and dynamic range, which is so integral to him. And as I said, Martin has, you for the entirety of Martin's projects, they're edited and graded using DaVinci Resolve for that complete end-to-end -end Blackmagic design workflow. Now, another really exciting custom story uh, centres around a social media campaign for the Mercedes AMG A-Class, which was shot by DP Matteo Bertoli with the pocket camera 6K, and again, using our Blackmagic RAW codec. Now, this entire project was shot on location in Frankfurt in Germany, and it involved tracking and lighting a moving car through the streets and the traffic. Matteo utilized the native 6K resolution and that dual ISO of the 6K against minimal existing street lights to really help create the drama of the nighttime driving shots. And this was combined with a fluid contemporary dancer in some indoor shoot in some indoor studio scenes. Now Mateo's used the pocket camera for, for a very long time, and he often shoots at five to one and three to one compression ratios in that 6K at both 48 and 24 frames per second. Now due to this, he, he really benefits from the power of of raw in such small and efficient file sizes. And again, just like with Martin, this was edited and graded completely with DaVinci Resolve Studio, providing that workflow consistency throughout the Blackmagic Design pipeline. Number three, we have a UK-based commercial agency called Still Moving Media. Now they recently completed a project promoting the launch of a new Aston Martin Concorde edition in partnership with British Airways. And this was to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the iconic Concorde's first flight. Now, Still Moving Media used the Pocket 4K to, to help deliver their client's vision of tracking and chasing an Aston Martin on a closed airfield. So the Pocket 4K was really chosen by Still Moving Media for its compact design and lightness as they were rigging directly onto a vehicle. And again, like with Martin and Matteo, 
they used internal uh, internal raw recording and they have the ability to use EF lenses through a lens adapter for that superior image quality. You know, they were using the micro four thirds mount, but were still able to shoot with EF glass. Now they were also able to record to see fast in raw via an SDI direct to our own Blackmagic video assist, which was held by a first AD in the car. Now the performance and color science of the camera really helped provide incredible creative options in post-production. Again, with the project being fully edited and graded on DaVinci Resolve. Now a fairly high profile case to end on involves the director of photography, John Brawley. Now John used a combination of Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K G2 and a pocket cinema camera 4K. Now John shot The Great, which is a 2020 satirical costume drama streaming on Hulu, which stars Elle Fanning and Nicholas Holt. Now whilst John did shoot the majority of his A camera footage with an Ari Alexa SXT, he would often use the G2 and the Pocket 4K at the same time, again shooting on that Blackmagic RAW codec. So John mentioned that Blackmagic's range of cameras really gave him the most flexibility and choice when approaching a shot. He knew that he could use any camera and know that he'd just get great shots. An example of this, as you can see by the, the image on screen, would be of hero close-up shots of Elle Fanning which was shot using the pocket camera in handheld mode. Now clearly you can see that this, this is a shot he couldn't achieve with a bigger camera. And these images from the Arri and the Blackmagic cameras were, were seamlessly matched in post-production as John felt the looks, color and dynamic range felt quite similar. And again, they used LUTs made in pre-production from that DaVinci Resolve, still providing that Blackmagic design pipeline. So, just quickly to summarize, we've obviously taken a look at the key innovative developments of our new pocket camera 6K Pro and looked at where it sits in the pocket family. We've obviously seen how the new ergonomic additions enhance your production, which allows for more creativity and operability when filming. And then we've also seen it where we see the 6K Pro fitting in the market and I've given you some pocket family use cases. Now, obviously, we're going to go into a Q and A now. But if there's any if there's any questions that you can think of afterwards that you're that you just couldn't think of now, then if you want to send an email out to the email address on screen, which is uh, pre sales emea at blackmagicdesign.com, then we'll be able to get back to you with hopefully a, a, a more informative and, and, and direct answer. And again, many thanks for joining me and. Thank you for having me and I hope you found this webinar useful and, and insightful. But I think now let's go to the, the Q&A. All right, so thank you for that. So I have uh, some interesting questions that we got both from our Facebook um, live stream now and some of them are sending it to me via my WhatsApp account. So the very quest, first question from a very good friend, Jim Karim is asking, can, can I have the can I have generation generation five color science in my pocket 4K? Yes, yeah, so there will be a very very shortly. There is going to be a um, a firmware update which will provide which will basically backdate generation five into the pocket 4K and the pocket 6K. I don't have an exact date right now, but I know that this update will be coming very soon, and you're not going to be waiting very long at all. But um. Yes, this will be a great way for you to be able to match your 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 4K or your 6K and your new 6K Pro footage perfectly. Yeah, I mean, I've been getting that question from Jim for for quite <laughs> for quite some time now. So there you <laughs> there's your answer, Jim. So another question from John: Can I use the EVF, the new viewfinder, for my scene, pocket cinema camera 6K? So just a big uh, background. John, uh, one of our um, end users here in Dubai, they have I think three or four 6Ks, and he's wondering the you know the original 6Ks, and he's asking if they can use the new EVF for that. So unfortunately, no, you can't. The um, again because it's a new um, proprietary high density pin connector into the top of the camera body. It is obviously the EVF can can unfortunately only be used for the new 6K Pro, so no, unfortunately not. Mm -hmm. Unless he buys a new 6K Pro, so yeah, that's the. Yeah, I, I, I <laughs> yeah, you, that's for you to say. <laughs> <laughs>
So I'll, I'll speak to John after this. So um, <laughs> there's another one. Um, the Pocket 6K Pro comes with warranty and its coverage area or international. I mean, the question is about the warranty uh, thing from Celine yeah, that's, Cara. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I've been asked that. I can go. That's the. I can go away and get a, get a definite answer for you on that one. I I'm not a hundred percent sure right now, but um. If I get your your email address, then I can I can reach out to the sales team. And again, I think you know the warranty is obviously more of like a sales department question. But what I can do is I'll reach out to them, and then I will I'll be able to contact you directly and, and just inform you about whether yeah where the warranty sits and stands internationally. Yeah, I'll actually have a chat with Celine later on, so you know to discuss the warranty uh, stuff. And uh, we have a question from Fatty. Um, can I change it to PL mount? No, so it's it's a native it's a native um, EF mount on the on the 6K Pro. Obviously, you can get um, lens adapters, so you can obviously get an EF to a PL mount adapter. Um, but yeah, no, unfortunately, no. It's a, it's a it's a fixed EF mount on the camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, and again, that's that, that's that's just because we've seen you know for a lot of our people who would be say stepping up from the 6K to the 6K Pro, um, a lot of them will have existing EF glass, and and again, the EF. EF glass is still so widely used and accessible that we felt that any EF lens would be would be the right would be the right lens mount to have on this camera. Yes, and uh, speaking of that, I'm sorry. <laughs> speaking of that, there you know we we have some G2 users that are using EF lens, LPL lenses for their for most of their work, and when they got the 6K Pro, that's one of the very first questions. One of the very first questions that I got from them. And I think, like what you said, you know, unlike the Ursa Mini Pro G2, wherein you have the ability to, you know, replace the mount by yourself, um, in 6K Pro, in EF, you can just get um, an adapter for it. Uh, it's a third party, another manufacturer for that, right, George? Yeah. So yeah, we there's yeah. Obviously, you have you have interchangeable lens mounts with um with other with our other cameras but yes it would be it would be a third party um uh lens adapter that you would have to get for to convert it from an ef to a pl mount if you're using it on the on the 6k pro yes okay and uh, we have a question from princess he she, she asks how do i determine the right storage spec that will work perfectly with a pocket cinema camera so storage Oops. What what camera? Um, I said that this. George there from our stream. Um, I think we. I'm just looking at our Skype monitor there. Uh, we kind of lost you for a bit there, George. Am I back now? You're back now. Where where was I cut off? I'll carry on. Uh, from the beginning. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so yes, yeah, so with regards to the um the the storage the storage for the 6K Pro, there is there's a lot of detailed um information on the website that there's a table that specifies exactly um the the read and write speeds of depending on what codec or what what format or what frame rate you're shooting at or your compression ratio so the best thing to do would be to would be to really check and figure out what you're typically going to be recording at and then you'd be able to calculate your your storage speed or the size in the files uh, or the, the storage sizes that you're going to need again you know you can shoot you, there's such a wide range of non-proprietary media for you to use that really just calculate that what you tend to record at and then you should be able to go from there mm -hmm. yeah and again yeah like what you said you know what their you know target codec is for their acquisition and then um possibly the you know their targeted number of you know how are they shooting a long form are they shooting a music video or shooting a documentary you know those those there's a lot of things that you really have to consider when when choosing the right storage media for you yeah um, yeah. yeah and the good thing with black magic design pocket so you have three ways or three options to you know to to decide so you have an option for ssd for cfast and sd cards as well so 
you know yeah exactly and and you know uh, yeah for for a lot of people they they'll meant they'll they'll buy a fair few at the same time for you know i know for a lot of documentary filmmakers or if they're if they're if they're recording for a, for a long time the ssd is just it's just a better option for them um so again it's in it's not a direct answer but it depends so much on what you're what you're shooting with or your yeah what you're trying to acquire that it varies so much so probably just look at what you're looking to shoot at and then that would help you best inform you on what what to purchase all right there's another one uh from alec uh on which medias is 6k raw available to record so there is a so what i can do is i can send i can send over a list there is a list of all of the um compatible media that you can record into into 6k raw and again there's such a wide variety of them it'd probably be best for me to send you a list and then you can you can see exactly what media you can record onto raw in so that there's no there's no issues because again instead of me reading every single one what i can do is i can get a list sent out to you and uh, I have a follow-up question from Jim Karim uh, in here. He, he he asked me if the if the available media that's that can record in that that is was this <laughs> sorry if the available media that is being recognized for 6K can also work with 6K Pro. Um, if I may answer that, George. Um, yeah, sure. So so Jim, it's um, yes, actually uh, like what George said a while ago, it's essentially the same internals really so the the codec the the, the size of the the resolution the frame rate you know whatever is being um recommended for the 6k you know some other storage media manufacturers have not updated their list yet but if you see pocket 6k there 6k pro will will uh, it will work with the 6k pro um, yes and and obviously some if, if if say a piece of media is not compatible sometimes that may be that the the manufacturer the media manufacturer has done a firmware update and and it may not be compatible so obviously again we have those lists in the support website um on blackmagic so if you keep checking there but yes but larry sim to what you said pretty much 6k and 6k pro internally everything is 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 near enough identical so whatever was compatible with your 6k will be compatible with your 6k pro and another question this from typhoon there's the pocket cameras have autofocus no so that so that no there's no there is no kind of autofocus like um like phase detection or anything like that no no that's not something that mm. we have in the cameras unfortunately i know that again there's a there's a lot of cameras out there that have have fantastic autofocus but no that's something that unfortunately we don't have uh, yeah, I think if uh, he's talking about the the tracking autofocus or uh, like a face detection, like what he said, um, and also you know, but if they're just looking for you know a single point autofocus, if they're using an electronic yeah. uh, lens, you know, it can it can run the autofocus of that lens, right? So yes, yeah, it can do that. But I think yeah, if you're looking for like a like a face detection or like a yeah a tracking on where if you're moving your head back and forward and it captures it, no. But that yeah, you'll ha you'll still have the one kind of like the one shot um, autofocus that you could get with certain electronic lenses. Yeah, and I think that's one of the one of the most common questions that we get as well. And I think the the real best way to really look at it is that you know the pocket cinema camera. Um, you know, from, from the name itself, it's a cinema camera and, the, you know, most cinema camera users would really look at the ability or the capabilities of really um, working on the camera, you know, and most of, most of the, at least most of the guys or the users that I know there, most of them are even using manual lenses. So they're, they're, um, they're you know, most of these guys are a fan of manual lenses because they have absolute control of their, of their shot with, with that. Yeah. Yeah. Of. Just, just, just get a budget, get a higher budget, and pay for a focus puller. That's what I say. No, yeah. it's, I, <laughs> I understand. I know that you know autofocus is getting better and better, but still, for for a lot of people who would would use a would like to use this type of camera, they I think they still feel feel more comfortable using uh, using a manual focus and being able to kind of pull focus focus themselves, and especially with the inclusion of these NDs, it's the ability to have that shallower depth of field that you want. So for a lot of people, it's still manual focus is the way to go for them. Yeah. 
Okay, so actually we we're over time for about 10 minutes. So uh, I think we have to stop here for now. And like what George said, you know, he flash the email address of Pisa Sumia and but if you guys are in the region um, I, I saw some messages coming here and there and you know you can always talk to us locally we, we can definitely help uh, and provide support if you need it and I think that brings us to the end of our session and uh, it's nice to have you today George okay. Okay, we lost George once again. Um, but anyway, that brings us to the end of our session today. Again, thank you guys for watching um, and just stay tuned for our upcoming sessions, both in the Middle East and in Istanbul. And if there are any questions that you want us to address or if you want us to answer, please feel free to contact us. Again, this is Lawrence and thank you for watching Midicast Virtual Summit mini series. Bye, guys.